the cut Pokédex, low quality animation, the fucking trees. Pokémon Sword and Shield has been drowning in controversy since its release. Yes, I wanted more Pokémon. Yes, I think the trees look like shit. But I can put my head aside for the tree if it's a good game. I'm not going to boycott a game because Ekans isn't in it, really. I ended up buying the game because I wanted to experience the first 3D Pokémon game on the Switch. Is this the big new Pokémon game? Is this the Legend of Zelda of the Pokémon games? Legend of Zelda Sword and Shield? Has this been worth all of the controversies? The best way to explain this is to just recap my playthrough, honestly. <laughs> I booted the game up, honestly excited, ready to experience Pokemon again after years of taking a break from the franchise. The last Pokemon game I played was maybe Pokemon Y for the 3DS. So, started the game and immediately tried to create my character, the personification of Lost Trigger, and to my surprise, your character can either be white or dark skin. My people are constantly underrepresented character creation, oh god. Characters done and I'm ready to start the game. I say goodbye to my Okasa and I head out on my adventure with my best friend Hop. See, Hop is a strange character. He is both your rival and your BFF. He strikes you down with one hand and jerks you off with the other. What a guy. This guy will brag about how hard he's going to stomp you to the dirt. This man is going to murder your Pokemon team and be the next champion. And the second he loses, he's all like, GG man, those are some good battles. <laughs> God, I can't stand this. It's time to pick your starters. Now, I actually don't have a problem with the models in Pokemon Sword, though they lost a lot of details and the transitions from 2D to 3D actually doesn't bother me. I mean, I still think they look nice and some of the Pokemon look pretty cute. I cannot say that. For the starters, these things look lame. Their designs, in my opinion, are boring, unaspiring. They look weird. Abominations. So I default to the score button because I usually just go with the fire starter. You know, Charmander, um, Torque hip and fernate. I beat Hoppin after another hour so I can finally escape his presence and actually play the game. And that's when I finally hit the open world. Now I've had my reservations with this game, the cut Pokemon, the graphics and animations, the trees, but once I hit the open world I really didn't care anymore. It reminded me of what I played Pokemon games for, the Pokemon, for the new regions and different moves to explore new routes and catch the Pokemon I love. I wanted to see what new Pokemon lived in this region and I wanted to, for the first time, catch every Pokemon in the game and finally fill out the Pokedex. Now I spoiled myself a bit before buying the game, I watched a few streamers stream it so I had a good idea of what Pokemon was in the game, so when I did get to the open where I started building my team while filling up my PC box before fighting the first gym leader. The game has made several quality of life changes. You can access the PC box from anywhere so you don't have to keep running back to the Poke Center. They give you the bike pretty early on and I think that's about it. You know, nothing else I can think about. I'm actually having fun in the open world. I'm running through all the grass seeing what Pokemon I can find. I spent maybe six hours in the open world just catching everything. You know, living the Pokemon dream. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. I even down with the raid battles a bit, but you know what we'll get into it. We'll get into that later. Oof. So Pokemon Sword has Roman Pokemon. Sounds cool, makes sense. 3D world, open world, Pokemon walking around. Pretty sound logic. But this game introduced a limit on the Pokemon you can catch. See, you can only catch Pokemon up to a certain level in relation to the amount of gen badges you have. And people tried to say, well, that's how it is in Persona, so why are people complaining? You just wanted something to complain about. You know what else they have in Persona? Color coded shadows. If a shadow is too strong for you to catch, they're red. You can see if it's catchable before you fight it. You understand that? There's no way to know if this Pokemon is above your level. Most of them are, at least early on, most of them are. But you will find Roman Pokemon that aren't above your level. And because in the first open world it's just one circle with high level Pokemon dispersed and broken up into sections, you can find weaker Roman Pokemon in one area, take a quick jog a few inches up and find some above your level. Needless to say, my original plan of just ignoring all of the Roman Pokemon didn't work because for every five Roman Pokemon I accidentally ran into, at least one of them was actually catchable. So I ended up wasting a lot of time trying to find the ones that actually were. God, this was Lord. And do you know what else Pokemon Sword did? They introduced Pokemon with arbitrary lines of code that says, if this Pokemon health is not X or less, low catch rate, you can't catch it. Almost impossible. And what I mean by that is, see, catching Pokemon through my playthrough has been the easiest this has ever been in the Pokemon game. I'm catching Pokemon at full health, half health, I'm catching Pokemon into the level 20s or higher with like regular Pokeballs. I didn't even need to use Great Balls until maybe like 10 hours in for 
like Pokemon are like 30, 40. For the most part, you can use Pokeballs to catch anything you want regardless of its health. But there will be some Pokemon, some random ass Pokemon out there. One that's not even over leveled, that looks exactly the same as everyone else. But when you fight this one magical random Pokemon, if you do not get its health to a certain point, you will not catch it. And this is to the point where let's say you're fighting a Pikachu at level 25 with 80 health or something, I don't know. You get its HP down to 20. It's in a red. This Pikachu is bleeding out and needs immediate medical attention. The game will not let you catch that Pikachu because the point at which this catch rate becomes, I don't know, a reasonable catch rate. And by reasonable, I literally mean from wasting like 10 Pokeballs to immediately being caught. The point at which that happens will be when the Pikachu hits 18 health points. Not only is that such a stupid, arbitrary feature or line of code, whatever you want to call it, you have no way of knowing until it happens. When you let your fourth or fifth Pokemon die, you switch from Pokeballs to Great Balls, and that's when it finally hits you. Ah, maybe his health needs to just be slightly lower. Hmm. That shit drives me up a wall. If you don't have a Pokemon or move, just get it below that threshold. You can either let your whole team die wasting Pokeball after Pokeball hoping you just catch it or just give up. Pokemon also become more catchable depending on the level of the Pokemon you're using. So trying to calculate the actual reason why you can't catch this level 20 Pikachu with 20 health left, just, it starts to get a bit complicated and annoying. Really? really annoying. All of that nonsense aside, I've caught a good amount of Pokemon, I have my team picked out for this part of the game, and now I'm ready to start advancing. And I hit my first problem, the rematch with Hop. I was at least 7 levels above him. Yeah. Now, I didn't want experience here automatically turned on. I thought it would have made the game way too easy and after listening to many live streamers, many people also agreed that it made the game way too easy. The Pokemon Defender swore up and down, the Game Freak would never turn it on unless they balanced the game around it. Huh. I mean, I would rather just have the option to turn it off, but if Game Freak balanced the game around that feature, then I can't really complain, can I? I will say this, it's very possible, though unlikely, the Game Freak did balance the game for experience here. If you don't know what experience here means, it means when one Pokemon gets experience for a battle, the whole team does. Now while they might have balanced the game for XP here, they also let you get experience for catching Pokemon. The whole team gets experience every time you catch Pokemon. So while I'm out here having fun, living the Pokemon dream, catching them all, I fucking broke the game. Seven levels of hit of hop. My god, brilliant. But I wanted to believe, I just had to believe that the gym leaders could handle me. And when I finally got to the gym leader, my Pokemon were already in their second evolved forms. Around level 23, 24, 25, I was right on the level cap for catching Pokemon. And the gym leader was level 20. Needless to say, I disgraced this man with one Pokemon. Didn't even need the Dynamax, but I did. This is showing how powerless he was before my team. And that's when I realized I had broken the game by just catching Pokemon and trying to have a good time living the Pokemon dream of catching them all. I put my team at least 5 to 10 levels above everyone else. It was at this point that I decided not to catch any more Pokemon. Fuck them, I don't need them. If I wanted to enjoy this game, I needed to stop catching all Pokemon unless I planned on using them. So the rest of the game could catch up in difficulty. The only experience I got was from gym battles, trainer battles, fighting hop, and from the first gym leader all the way up to the Elite Four, I caught maybe 10 additional Pokemon, which were just Pokemon that I wanted for my team. And the last decision I made to sort of make the game slightly more difficult was I changed the battle style to set. The game will have it automatically set on Switch, meaning after you defeat a Pokemon when the trainer sends out their next Pokemon, you can switch yours out. And by changing it to set, you don't know what Pokemon they're going to send out, so if you want to, you know, switch yours out and counterpick them, you have to, you know, waste the turn. I changed it to set to try and make the game more difficult because I'm A levels above everyone, and if I don't get some sort of challenge, then this is going to be boring. At least now, if I want to switch Pokemon, it's going to require a turn, you know, add a bit of difficulty. What I didn't realize what happened was that I would use less of my Pokemon now. Because of the XP share being automatically on, you have less of a reason to switch your Pokemon. And because I was already over leveled and needed to make the game harder, so when I set my battle style to set, it turns out I really didn't want to waste turn switching Pokemon out, so I, I just usually did the whole battle with whoever Pokemon I sent out first. Now this may not sound like a big deal to some people, but a lot of people play Pokemon because we love Pokemon. We want to grow and evolve our favorite Mons 
and take them into battle, go on adventures and form connections with them. It's why people are upset their favorite Pokemon got cut. But because all Pokemon get experience from battles, you use each individual Pokemon a lot less. And if you switch your battle style to set like I did, you really won't feel connected to your team. I used to feel an emotional connection with my team in previous games and all the hardships we went through. And I had to make myself switch off because some Pokemon I never used the entire game. Now that that's out the way, we can finally begin the adventure of a trainer who was 10 levels above everyone else. I steamrolled through the second to the sixth gym leader. I bitch slap hopped like 20 times every time he wanted to battle. I skipped out on catching a lot of Pokemon. I did all of the routes. Uh, the routes are pretty small in this game with little to explore or find. I did the caves, which were really just two routes. The route to the end of the cave and the route which led to one item. The game doesn't have much exploration or really big zones or areas. The biggest routes they have are really just two lanes. The one that leads to the next area and the one that leads to an item. These areas can really just speed ran through in about three minutes or so. Around this time I realized I was nearer the end of the game and it was time for the raid battles. Raid battles don't give you XP so it's perfect for me. So what are raid battles? Raid battles are where you fight Dynamax Pokemon. They are giant behemoths akin to boss battles and MMOs. You can fight them with up to three online players or three AI. The difficulty ranges from level one to five and upon catching them you get a Pokemon with higher stats. I think don't don't quote don't quote me on that. I think they just have a higher Dynamax level, which means when they Dynamax their health is higher. And you also get a bunch of items that really makes the game feel like an RPG. You get experience candies, which gives your Pokemon more experience. You get rare candies, which level up your Pokemon. And TRs. Now, what are TRs, you might be asking? So you have TMs. We all know what TMs are. TMs give your Pokemon moves and they don't break. There's maybe 10 in the entire game. And the other TMs have been replaced with TRs, which are TMs, but they break. Nice. And from what I can tell, there are not a lot of them. Nice. Cut the Pokédex, cut the TMs, and then make the rest of the TMs breakable. Okay. Alrighty. Raid battles were cool at first. They're like Pokemon boss battles and you get a ton of goodies if you win. But the problem is everything else. If you're playing by yourself with AI, raid battles suck. The AI will often use pre-evolved Pokemon. You will have trainers using fucking Magikarp or whatever regardless of the boss level. Even at the max level, level 5, this woman will throw out a Magikarp. But to make it worse, 2 out of 3 of the Pokemon that the AI use will have a losing type advantage. If any Pokemon dies 6 times, you lose the battle and considering the AI at least two of them will have a losing type advantage They easily get one shot it if you trained your Pokemon while well, you can sort of solo levels one two three four is really pushing it But you know mostly four to five you're gonna need some online players or maybe some friends now the thing with online players Every time I got to play online it took five minutes to find one player and after the five or so minutes are up You can either ride it out with the one player and two AI or leave the queue and search again. Meaning while trying to find at least two players, I've wasted upwards of 20 minutes for starting queues trying to get at least two people to join and that's for each raid battle. Raid battles quickly lost their charm for me. Fuck catching Pokemon, fuck raid battles, let's just finish the game and get to the post game content. <laughs> Content. Right around the 6th or 7th gym leaders when the battles actually started to get more dangerous for me. Not because the Pokemon were on my level, but their stats were high enough and their moves were strong enough that they actually started dealing good damage. I still steamrolled them, but you know. It was kind of fun. I didn't actually fight a Pokemon on my level until the Elite Four, not even the Elite Four, until the third round of the Elite Four, right before you fight the champion. Because I had the audacity of catching Pokemon in the open world. Because of that, I didn't fight a Pokemon on my level until the third round of the Elite Four. So I beat the Elite Four. I go to catch the legendaries. Now while the fight with the legendary Pokemon itself is pretty fun, the events surrounding it is filled with jerking the player around, repetitive missions, redoing the same thing thing three four or five times go over here and do this and then go over there and do that and then go over there you, you kind of get the point so while the end of the game is actually pretty lame the stuff surrounding the legendary pokemon themselves are fine so i beat the game i have the legendaries and i'm finally ready for the post game and the post game for sword and shield is the battle tower that's it that's all there is
no new region, no new area to go to, no new Pokemon to catch, or even new legendaries. Every Pokemon game has new legendaries to catch and a side mission after you beat the game. In fact, thinking about it, the actual post game for Pokemon Sword and Shield is catching the main legendaries because the game officially ends after you become the champion. Meaning, the actual official post game for Pokemon Sword and Shield is the rest of the damn story where you catch the legendaries on the box store. How fucking lazy. I, I cannot believe this. I was in shock. No. Disarray. What the hell? After you beat the game, you have access to the Gigamax Pokemon. Like the big Meowth and Charizard. Gigamax Pokemon are Pokemon that when you Dynamax them, they have their own special form. So let's talk about Dynamax. I've explained why I don't like raid battles. Now let's talk about Dynamaxing in actual battles. It's broken. For the story mode, you Dynamax, you win. That's kinda it, really. The Pokemon teams just aren't equipped to handle, not equipped, the game is not equipped to handle you Dynamaxing on them. Especially if you have the type advantage. You Dynamax in the water zone for an electric Pokemon, that's just GG. <laughs> but you Dynamax online, oh ho ho, oh that is some shit. You see online, if you Dynamax not even at the right time, not even at the wrong time, if you just Dynamax at just any random time, you can just sweep at just about anyone. And because no Pokemon wants to switch into a Dynamax powered up move, even if you have the type advantage, meaning if you have the type Type of it, you take reduced damage. Depending on their stats and your stats, you can still die, or you'll just die in two hits. If you buffed your Pokemon before Dynamaxing, they still have the buffs, and each Dynamax attack gives them another buff. So after Dynamaxing is over, if your Pokemon doesn't immediately die, you can still sweep with your now buffed stats. So unless you have the right Pokemon with the right typing and the right stats to just sit there and take newts to the face for three turns, the counterplay for getting Dynamax Storm is to just sacrifice three Pokemon until the other Dynamax runs out. You know your first Pokemon is likely gonna die, so you just hope that the second Pokemon can last long enough, because best case scenario, the second Pokemon you send out is gonna have a lot of its health taken away. It might die, you have to send out a third Pokemon, best case scenario, it lives with just like no health left. So even after the Dynamax is over, if you don't kill that Pokemon and it's faster than you, then it'll kill you, and that was still buffed, and if it's a good Pokemon, it's just gonna sweep your team, it's just, oh, oh my god, this, this shit is. The, the only other thing you can do is waste your own Dynamax because you get more health and just kind of Dynamax each other. And if you have to waste your own Dynamax just to survive a Dynamax, then that's, you know, that's, that's, that is... That is something. And that is why I did not care enough to catch the Gigamax Pokemon. There's no new content to use them with, there's nothing to do with my Pokemon besides the Battle Towers. And I think Dynamaxing is pretty stupid in online battles, so I, I really didn't care enough to go catch the Gigamax. That's the real post content, the, the Gigamax Pokemon. There's only like 6 of them or something. The game is easy to beat, it's honestly pretty short. I spent most of my time in the open worlds catching Pokemon, and if you don't do that, you'll be at a fairer level for the difficulty that the game is at. But you can also save off like five hours from the game like you can honestly beat this game in one sitting if you don't sit around in the open worlds like i did and if you do well now your team's on steroids hoorah now you gotta deal with that they cut the team list and even with the trs it's so easy to get the really good trs early on that you can again make your team really broken way too fast dynamaxing is both stupid and not balanced for single players so you can again make the game way too easy you can sit on any trainer in game with, with a type of in just soloing gems with one pokemon because they only have one type that's how strong type advantage is in this game if you have the type of if you just waste people god forbid you dynamax on them i don't know why you would because you really don't need to but god forbid you dynamax we all memed on the trees but they actually aren't that good looking even the animations aren't bad the animations aren't bad but they're not really a step up or anything worth talking about i mean the dynamax animations look pretty cool but for your normal pokemon if anything it just makes the battles play out way too long and a lot of people suggest turning off the battle animations and the worst part of it is the game just doesn't have any features you can buy a lot of clothes for your character and you can go camping with your pokemon but before pokemon sword drop i watched some less plays for pokemon let's go eevee a like pokemon switch game with features like riding your pokemon and letting your pokemon follow you around while feature wise you can do the same thing with, with your bike you know traversing the, the um the world you know these things like riding your pokemon and letting them off the pokeballs make you feel closer to your pokemon these things give you just a little bit more to do with the game. I was expecting Pokemon Sword to not only include these features but expand on them. I wanted this game to innovate. Even if it was going to be shorter or, or have less features, I was expecting this game to at least be the blueprint 
for something amazing like how Breath of the Wild was. But at the end of the day, this is just another Pokemon game. But not just another Pokemon game, a bare bones Pokemon game. A Pokemon game that has cut the most content in any Pokemon game for less Pokemon, less content, no real post game, low graphics, for a game that has bad frame rate issues in the in the open world, which is the main selling point for Pokemon Sword and Shell. For 3D models with less textures than the CD models, it cut all of that just to say that there's a new mainline Pokemon game on the Switch. I'm sure many people will love this game, and I'm sure people will run through this without thinking about any of this and just have a fun, casual experience with the game. And for those people, I hope you have a good time. But I do not recommend anyone spending $60 for this game. I'd rather risk getting murdered trying to buy this game on Crash Tips than spend $60 on the Pokemon Sword and Shield game. Persona 5 is a better Pokemon game. So this is my Pokemon review. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and sub to my channel. You can also check out my anime channel on Twitter for more content. Peace. Thanks for watching.